All right, everybody, welcome to the second episode of the Winter Kills podcast, Winter Chills podcast. I still don't have an official name yet, but I appreciate everybody that left their suggestions on the first episode, which I realized was uploaded quite a while ago. Um, I don't really have a schedule for this. I still don't. It's just kind of like whenever we can do it, we can do it because everybody's got their own schedules and things like that. But I'm glad that you guys have enjoyed this podcast. Um, at least the first episode, so we'll, we'll continue to put out more as we have the time to do so, and I'm joined here with my friend Adam. What's going on, guys? Be- good to be back on the cast, the Winter Chills. Absolutely, the Winter Chills cast. Oh, yes. I forget who, who made that suggestion in the comments, but <laughs> th- that was the only good name, and I think you might have been one of the only people that left a name suggestion, so Big shout shout-outs out- to you. Yeah, shout-outs to you. I think that's the name. We'll, we'll, we'll roll with that name unofficially for now, I guess, but... Mm. um. So we have a few topics uh, to talk about today. I think the goal from now on will probably be able to make this more of like a a free form thing where we just kind of, you know, talk about whatever for an hour, keep it, you know, along the lines Yu-Gi-Oh related, obviously. Mm -hmm. But um, the one thing, the one main topic I wanted to do today was talking about um, our, what decks we played at our first major event. Yeah. And I know what mine was, and I know the event was. I don't. I don't know if it's the same. Your event. I think our be the first same. event is the same event. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think that was Rochester Regional. Yep. 2015. Early 2015, February, I, I believe. Yeah, definitely around there, and uh, that was right around the height of Necroz. Yeah, that was. I think a week or a couple of weeks after Secret Forces dropped. Um, Necroz still at full power. Nothing got touched yet on the list. Mm-hmm. Nothing happened yet. It was just full force Necroz. Vanities was still at three. All that fun stuff. Skill Drain was at three still. Yeah. Like, Clifford was Clifford was pretty good, yep. I remember. I remember seeing the top tables there. Yep, I remember final round was our buddy Glenn yep. playing against that Clifford player with his mm-hmm. uh, spicy tech. He was playing Clifford, Glenn? No, or was he, he was playing, playing Necroz, but he was playing against Clifford's in like for first place, basically. What was that tech card he was playing? I think it was Malice Dispersion. Malice Dispersion. That card is very obscure. What does that card do? It like negates face right up spells or traps or something like that by discarding a card. Very. I know very it's a obscure. quick play spell, right? Yes, it is a quick play spell. I need to probably look. put it up on screen. Here. Yeah, I'll put it up on the screen so the the viewers. Can yeah, see Malice it. Dispersion. Discard one card from your hand. Destroy all face up continuous trap cards. So yeah, it says goodbye skill drain. Goodbye vanities. Goodbye. Uh, I don't know if they play any other continuous traps. Recreate was oh, re- recreate a thing then. That might, I don't think that was out yet, but I don't. I don't remember. But yeah, the skill drain vanities was the main card you were clearing with those. Yeah, I remember he was talking that card up so much and he hey, would not let anybody let it go. I mean, but... it got him first place, so good yeah. on him. Doesn't play anymore, but that was very very good regional top by him. Went undefeated the whole day. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's that's one of those things I like about Yu Gi Oh with, with how wide the card pool is. When you go to events in those formats where it's pretty much solved, where, like, I think at the time it was just Shadal, Necroz, Clifor, and BA. Those were, like, the big four yeah, decks, I think, Tellers at the time. Tellers kind of faded away, and, like, yeah. the, you had your rogue strategies, like Ritual Beast and Yosenju that came out, too. Those were very prevalent at that regional, I remember. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I don't really, can't, don't really, can't really think of any other decks that were, like, super great during that time those Mm -hmm. were like if you weren't playing one of those decks you probably weren't doing so hot yeah but that was one of those formats like that that's just one of the great things about Oh, though with the how wide the card pool is you can really just like go through and like find a card like mouse dispersion and it might your friends might look at you like that's crazy like just just play mst because i don't think twin twister was out yet it definitely wasn't neither was cosmic um, but and I remember just had like fairy wind and spell shatter and a couple other yep. double, like oh big back God. road movement. Yeah. But like, that's, that's one of those like little, little finds, those little tech pieces that you, you get to you know, just looking through like the card database and just finding that one specific card that answers the problem. Like a problematic card, this format we'll talk about later <laughs> His favorite card just came format. out in <laughs> phantom rage. We'll talk about that. But like finding an answer to those problems and then having it work in your deck and having it pay off like that. It's really cool. Yeah, it's very, very nice. It's very it's super rewarding. Oh yeah. And to come up with your own tech like that and have it to actually cause you to win. Like a whole event. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. But so good on him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I know your uh <laughs> event didn't go as uh well as his. No. Wanna no, talk about not, yours first? Not as well as yours either. I played Infernoid. Very 
cool pick for a that new, format. But new deck, too, I very think. Very new. Secrets of Eternity dropped very recently, I yep. remember. I don't think Deviati was out yet. Nope. It was just Anuku, Atondel, Sightsimus. Yep. I don't really remember. The we ones. had... Like the small we had, ones. Yeah, we had uh, yeah, Hermatic and Petrulia. Yeah, it didn't have the level 1 one yet, though, mm-hmm. right? Or the level 5. We had the level 2, 3... Four, five, seven, and eight. I think we didn't yeah. have level, we didn't no have the Sujeti. Nine, no one. Oh yeah, you didn't have the Sujeti. Yeah, the the there's there's piety. I think is yes. level five. Yeah, that's level five. And then there's two level one. ones. There is two level ones. Yeah, I remember the 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 the, the one Decatron that isn't Decatron. Pyramize, right? Yeah, yeah that one used to those. be called. I remember when it got revealed in the OC, it was called Satan. Satan. Infernoid oh Satan. God. Super edgy. Um, mm. as you can tell, by all the edgy stuff I have in the background of my Edge videos Lord. and stuff. <laughs> Absolute edge lord. Infernoids is definitely one of your shout out your to decks. the the metal fans in the comment section. I always see comments people posting about like the the posters and records and stuff I got up in the wall. So, shout outs to them. But the uh, I remember I remember having uh, Billy helping me out a lot with that. Let's mm-hmm. give me like tech ideas. He's the one that also told me to play Skill Drain in the main deck at the time because all the infernoids would be able to still use their effects on field yep. tribute. Because the they tribute banish, for cost, yep. yep. And then their effects would activate, like, mm-hmm. in the graveyard. Or, like, uh, Nuku to negate a spell or trap, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, that was good synergy there, or something along the lines of that. Mm-hmm. And I remember I, you played a uh, Blaster, too. Yep, I played Blaster. I played um, Hidden Armory, Search Snatch Deal, because oh, Snatch right. Deal was legal Snatch at the time. Legal for this format. So you would be able to search your Snatch Deal, and then you'd mill a card off the top of your deck, so just mm-hmm. a free Infernoid. Monster Gate was at... Three. I, I believe it didn't get hit yet. I'm not entirely sure. And I think no, Monster Re- Gate was still Monster at Gate one. was at one, but Reasoning was at three. Yeah, right? Reasoning was at three. Yeah. And you played Card Trooper too, right? Yep, Card Trooper. Did, oh. you, did you play a Neil Bug Nest? I don't know if you did. Uh, that that's a card I probably tried it uh, a few different times. Um, I remember actually that card was pretty expensive. I think when that when Infernites really? were getting really hyped up, like Needle Bug Nest, I think was one of those like common cards that shot up to like ten, ten plus a copy. Wow. I, I don't remember if I played it. Or not. I remember I played. That quick play hand destruction. Oh yeah, where you both each player, player discards, discards two, two and draw two. two. I think I teched that like at one or two copies. I don't think it was the greatest looking yeah. back, but I also remember I played a Twister in the side deck. I think the pay five hundred pop a face up. Pay five hundred pop a face up specifically for Cliff Horton, just floodgates, yeah. I believe. That but um, way too oppressive. <laughs> yeah, I remember I went four four was my record because I, I just wanted to play it out yeah it's the first event so i mean i might as well just play all the matches i can get all the experience that i can i remember was losing it nine rounds it was might it, have, it might have been i'm not sure uh, yeah. I, four, I remember whatever. four four specifically yeah you might have just not played the last round for yeah. obvious reasons yeah definitely and uh i remember the one i remember the one time i got like luck sacked by a burning abyss player in oh, like no. the final round because I was I was gonna I was like super hyped to go like five three yeah and have at least like somewhat of a positive record and uh, I'm pretty sure it was nine rounds it might it might have been <laughs> if somebody been else was there yeah, if anybody was at that 2015 <laughs> Rochester regional let us know but yeah it was I, eight or nine rounds yeah give or take but um it was like the situation where like he. I think I had like a Jinzo up because I was playing Jinzo too because that was good against BA and it was good against Cliff Horde, very yeah. trap heavy decks. And you could get it off Reasoning too because mm-hmm. it's a normal summonable monster. And uh, it's something like he, he needed a top deck like one specific BA. And I think I hit him with like a Dark Hole or something or mm. something like that. And he, and he top decked the one exact Burning Abyss monster that he needed. Like a Farfa or something? It was either that or like I attacked into one of his set ones mm. and he it, it was like a graph that summoned one and then next turn he was able to make a play mm. off of that. Damn. It was it was okay. Like the deck worked okay. I remember playing a few mirror matches I think and winning those because I, I felt really confident in, you know, in the Infernoid mirror. mirror in, yeah, that's so funny. In, my, in all the times that I always feel like I have a bad time in mirror matches that was like the one deck that I felt like I had a good you know, grasp on the mirror match because yeah. I mean, whoever had like Lancia like just won or that Chaos Hunter back then, Chaos yeah. Hunter and Lancia cards that still see play to this day which is kind of cool. Dual Alliance cards still making an impact. Um, Artifact Lancey, a very, very strong card. Yeah, and it was all right, but uh, it was definitely a learning experience. Yeah, first regional ever, too. So, I mean, 4-4, four, four, whatever, not that bad. And I remember sitting down round one, playing against Yosenju. <laughs> Taking the L? Or... Taking the L, round one to yes. Yosenju. Great way to start things off. Hate that deck to That's, this day. My luck in Rochester is just terrible. Yeah, it's you, just, you even even since 2015. You go there, yeah. It's just since 2015. 
But what did you play? I know well, I you played. I played uh, best deck, quote unquote, Necroz. First drop, three Bryo still, three prep. Oh my goodness, it was amazing. Mm-hmm. I remember sitting down round one. I got to play a mirror match. I was like, I'm so ready to go. Like, and I beat him. And mm-hmm. It felt great. And uh, for the most part, the day went excellent. I mm-hmm. played a, like quite a few mirrors. Played against, I think, a Shadal deck or two. Maybe a BA strategy. And I ended up going X2 at the end of the day. I think I got like 17th or 18th place or something like that. I got my invite. Um, the only two decks I lost to, too. I did not see a single clipboard, but I saw Yosenju. Yeah. Lost to both of them. They flipped to Vanities, and I was like, wow, fun game. Fun, yep. f- fun dueling. Mm-hmm. I mean, to be fair, Jinlock was a thing, so I would definitely dead some people during the day, but it's just a floodgate. Yeah. And uh, a floodgate trap card, fun trap card. Woohoo. Glad it's gone. And they're just going to normal summon, and they don't care, and they just return to the hand. And I can't clear it if I don't see my spell or trap out. So yeah, that was, that was actually a really good synergy. Yep. Because all their monsters would go back to their hand. You'd just, never be able to clear them to get the vanities yep, so to go away. So they just have a vanities, and then just all their dudes bounce back. How do you clear it? Yeah. Like, especially because, like, you I was just playing, had to You just had to Valk, Valk, Valk until you yeah, could get I around it. I was just it. playing, like, outs to Jin type stuff. I think I don't know if I was playing a specific one at the time, except, like, I think I was playing Book of Moon and or Eclipse mm-hmm. at the time because that was really strong. So, I mean, but I just didn't see it in those matchups, and I just ended up losing because of it, mm-hmm. which sucked, but... Other than that, it was a great day. Necroz was an excellent deck for the event, I think. like, was, I was lucky by not playing any Klee, which is great, but still played against two Yosenji, lost to both, but played against a bunch of Necroz and a couple of Rogue strategies here and there, but it was a really fun event. It was the first regional ever, so it felt awesome getting my first invite ever, too, and then going to Nats later that year. Hell yeah. But yeah, I miss Necroz. Amazing dueling deck to this day. Yeah, and I. It was just a great event, I think, because I think a bunch of the other boys got tops too, mm-hmm. who were from Buffalo, and it was really cool just going out with the gang mm-hmm. to Rochester, cramming in a car, yeah, getting up super early, just miss it, dude, miss events. Yeah. Hopefully, they'll be back soon. Yeah, hopefully. And uh, speaking of events, yeah, I, I, I the video is definitely the video has already gone up at this point where I mentioned at the start of it that my locals got canceled. Yeah. But uh, yeah, our locals was up and running for a, g- a good few months. I think it was about three months. I think it started back in like either late May or early June or something like that. Mm-hmm. It was running up until last Saturday, which was November something. I don't remember the exact date, but there was supposed to be locals tonight. But uh, here we are. Yeah. And uh, one deck one month is on hold for now. Uh, yeah, I, that I, was kind of a. Yeah, that's, tough month for uh, the Mech Knights. Yeah, it it was a tough month, man. It still is tough. Like, for in regards to the series, though, I think what's gonna happen is I might try to film for the last one again, like just playing against you and two other people, maybe. Yeah, that would be really cool. And just filming those matches and going over them, and that just being it for Mech Knight and giving yeah. the final thoughts on it. That would be a cool way to end it out. Yeah, and then I think from there I'm just gonna put it on on hold until locals yeah. come back. Obviously, I think that's the best way to go about it. Yeah. There was a series you were doing before, though, before local started. What was that again? Were you the just testing like, sessions? Yeah, the testing sessions. You could yeah, probably I'll probably bring that back. Bring that back for now because there's really not going to be too many locals. Unless mm-hmm. we're there, there's talk of moving locals to online. I don't know if they're going to be official sponsored by our tournament store mm-hmm. or if they're just going to be like a couple of players in our area just yeah. hosting like box tournaments or something in like that. In the community. Yeah, so those are either going to be done on dueling book at opro because i don't think there's really much of an interest for remote dueling around here yeah it sucks that remote duels require a lot of equipment that yeah most people might not have i mean i i i would be down for remote duels because of course i have all yeah, the stuff you to got do the it. gear to do it. i've got the gear to be fun but i'd be less down i have some things to do it but mm-hmm. i just am really not too interested in it i would just rather play online at that point yeah it's not everybody's uh, cup of tea unfortunately i yeah. just I wish Konami had a way to like have sanctioned duels online that didn't require remote duels. If they were like this is a little off topic, but if they had something like PTCGO, mm-hmm. like Pokemon game online, great sponsored by Pokemon, get packs online, yeah, amazing. But Yu Gi Oh is kind of lacking in that. Department. They're like, here's Duel Links. Yeah, here's Duel Links. It's kind of like that. I mean, but... Duel Links is great and all, but like, it's just not the. the it's not the same game. TCG. It's a totally different format. Like, they just got Xyz Monsters, I'm pretty sure. That yeah. was, like, one of the newest things. Yeah, they got no. some Teller Knights and stuff. Like Yeah, Teller's is apparently a pretty good deck on there, I hear. Of course it is. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, it's just totally different format. They just got Xyz. Hopefully they don't introduce Pendulums, because that would uh, just break the game. But, I mean, they do have, like, Link Mechanics already, I think, but... That that will th- this is Konami's chance to not ruin another game by implementing a Pendulum mechanic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just keep That's Pendulum their Monsters chance. out of it. 
keep vanity's emptiness yeah. out of it keep all those cards that the tcg had to suffer through yeah. unfortunately they've already learned their lessons there yeah so props to people playing that format they don't have to deal with as crazy stuff as we had to but yeah yeah but, but I wish- uh Oh, Ma- yeah. uh, what are you gonna uh, say? Uh, what are you gonna say? <laughs> <laughs> My bad. It's okay. Um, but yeah, going to online dueling for locals. I think it'll be a cool change, but at the same time, I'd love to just be in person. But yeah, with COVID stuff happening where we live, um, the the governor shut down uh, gatherings over twenty five. Yeah, people or so all sorts of organized play is just canceled. So mm-hmm. we just got to go back to online for the time being. Yeah, understandably so. Mm-hmm. It's out of our control. People need to wear their masks. That's all I'm going to say. But uh, speaking of mech nights, though, and it being a rough month, it certainly has been a rough month, and we were just playtesting, playing some matches. I don't know if I'm going to call it playtesting. We were just Maybe. playing some matches, getting some reps in, yep. especially with your, your build with some new cards in it. Yes, sir. Your uh, Dogmatica Zodiac deck. Back on the Dog Zoo deck. I was playing Dog Eldritch for a little bit, but... There's that Zeus card, man. It's yeah, hell of that, a drug. Um, hell that, of a drug. That card is unfair. And there's been some cards that have come out last year, year before that, this year even. I remember thinking Colossus was unfair. What about like Gumbar Goki stuff? Yeah, Gu- I mean, that was that's one thing. That's just like, it's an FTK, right? Yeah. And that's, just, that's a whole wombo combo to get there. I mean, it was very, like, they, they addressed it. Like, that was that was a super unfair card for sure. And uh, then you had, like, Colossus. And I remember Dengirisu being super oppressive, too, when the height of, like, Striker Orcus format. Which, actually, looking back now, I actually kind of miss that format. A good format. Like, I sure. remember playing Block PA and, like, learning all the matchups, mm-hmm. had the deck down, you know, to a T. Um, which is, I, I still, I need a deck right now that I can get to that level of concentration with. Which is hard to, you know, doing one deck one month, which I've been doing, you know, consecutively. Where it was Inferno, but then immediately Speedroid, then immediately Mech Knight. I think going forward, I might do one deck one month and then take a break maybe for a couple of weeks just to maybe focus on another deck mm-hmm. to kind of build on that and then go to another deck and then, you know, take that, that one month break and then come back and, you know, build on that other deck for a while so I can get to a point with one deck that I really like. And I'm not sure what that deck will be. Maybe it'll be Speedroids. That's what I was thinking. Speedroids. You seem to be very much enjoying that deck. I really enjoy Speedroids because I, I can go first and second. It doesn't have an issue going first like Mech Knights do. <laughs> that's, the, that's the deck's biggest problem. And I'll probably sound like a broken record, but like I remember talking about it in the series specifically, is that you have a card like Gearsu, which on paper is fantastic for Mech Knights. It, it, on paper, it solves every single problem the deck has. It gives you a card on the opponent's field to work with, dis- regardless of what they've done. Mm-hmm. If, they, if they if they go first and they just pass, you have gears, it doesn't matter. They get a token. It's mm-hmm. turning off gamma, if they didn't already use it already, but I'm just saying it can potentially turn off cards like gamma, imperm, um, things like that. And uh, and even on their turn, like uh, other things like uh, lightning storm and evenly match, whatever. Mm-hmm. But it gives you that card to work with. The problem is, is it's not like so consistent. It's not searchable going first, because if you're searching off blue or purple, which means you've already have a column established, and if you're searching it with blue sky, it means they've already have a card in play. They might have gammed you, they might have nabeared you, or whatever, or you're playing Ibli. But at that point, you've already used your normal summon, so Gearsu doesn't like fit in any of those equations, mm-hmm. and you can't get it. You can get it off memory. You can dump a card like you know, uh, World Legacy, World Chalice, or World Legacy, World Armor, um, but then you can't link it in anything. You need another Mech Knight. You need another column to work with. You need something else, some other starter. Like, Avram would even be better. Mm-hmm. Um, Avram and uh, actual Foolish Burial, but... Yeah. It's unfortunate there's no good, like... Mech Knight Link 1. That's Mech- what we need. <laughs> a Mech Knight Link 1 or just, like, a search card. Like, a generic search card, just like a spell card for mm-hmm. Mech Knights that just surges a Mech Knight or something like that. Yeah, because, like, it gives the deck Lib access, too, which is super important because Lib is such a powerful card. Being able to, like... Especially to help for that going first strategy, being able to set... Mul- like, getting more World Legacy stuff to the board, like Secrets or Memory or Whispers, and also going second for the removal with, like, even, like, Link Cross and stuff. It's, like, very, very good removal. Mm-hmm. You know, a, a non-target shuffle is, like, one of the best removals you can get. Yeah, apart from, crazy. like, non- non-targeting Banishment, mm-hmm. I think, which might be, like, the actual best form of removal. Maybe depending on the format, but usually, mm-hmm. sh- usually nothing gets an effect when it gets shuffled back into the no. deck. Very, very few cards do, I believe. Yeah, and, like, 
the other engine that I tried to test today too was like an engine with unexpected die, Avram, you know, uh Italian chosen of the world chalice, which is level three psychic for those that don't know. It's a normal monster as well. Um in theory, you know, with the combo where you go into Imduk, additional normal world legacy world chalice, link it for Almirage, get the effect of summon two, search a card. Like that combo is super resource efficient, but it's so inconsistent and it's a two card combo. And you know, two card combos in in this game right now don't sound so bad. It's just two cards. You know, you yeah. still have, you know, three other cards to work with. It's just the one really isn't so searchable. Yeah, that's the, where it, where the issue the comes cup, in. Right? Yeah, the cup. Yeah. You you can RNG get it off of World Legacy Survivor, but it's RNG, and you might just completely miss and go minus one outright. Yeah, like that's that's the biggest it's issue. Not with very it. good. Yeah, and then the we'll action to link something which your deck really doesn't care about. Yeah. But still another thing it's so that's why like part of me still thinks even even less now than yesterday thinking that there could be a build of uh a mech knights that works better than the gearsu build mm -hmm. but that thought has diminished so much so when you look at the reality of the format and what the best decks are and especially like a card like zeus getting back to zeus that card is so oppressive you could literally have and in this this man's deck just summons it like like there's literally there's Nothing. no no tomorrow it's just like the zodiac engine is literally perfect for it absolutely crazy like you just go good it is with zeus right into borbo mm -hmm. tack directly it doesn't activate yep. just overlay a bunch of zoo monsters and just put a zeus over it yeah and so dumb 3k 3k and you're gonna have four materials underneath it usually yeah it's not getting destroyed in most cases it can be able to attach from deck even right it only attaches if something else is destroyed. yeah another card you control but like yeah. that's still that's still absurd yeah, you attach from deck or extra deck which is crazy and that's that's another thing too it gives it some it gives it more materials which means you can use more potential like you know literally mm -hmm. send everything yeah uh, you know, type effects, but like one of the games, you have Zeus, you use the effect. I chain Secret or something, or I I I just activate Secret. You chain, and then and then I chain Memory, memory and nice. then you chain again. It's just it's I don't know what they were thinking. That I just, card should be once per turn, but it's not. It's not. It should have been even once per chain would have been better. Yeah. It's just so absurd. But like, how do you deal with a card like that? There really isn't that many ways that I can think of off the top of my head, except like effect negation. During Forbidden Droplet, I think, is the only card. Yeah, the only like card that's like played like quite a bit right now. Probably would be Droplet. Mm -hmm. Imperm, like, but like that's never gonna come up unless you already have it preset. Yeah. Or like Forbidden Chalice seems good for those so, like, that can't afford Droplet. The other thing too is like Dark Lord and more seems okay, but you can't make Zeus if you go first. Yeah, you can't make Zeus if you go first. So Dark Lord and more is just. You it, have to it, hold it, which yeah. isn't very good. So you still have to play through a board. Yeah. Then you have to play through a Zeus if you hold the Dark Ruler. Of a Flirtily, a uh, Dryden, and, you know, uh, whatever it's called, a uh, punishment. punishment. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's it's such a good combination, of even with Invoke, because, like, you have so many interruptions that are in different places and they're in different forms. It's not yeah. like a Dragon Link board that's just all monster that's negates. True. A huge board like Dark Lunar Noir just ruins it. Mm -hmm. Granted, they can Smoke Grenade, but Smoke Grenade's a card that just outright should leave the format. Because <laughs> it, it just, just it like destroys hammers. deck building. Because like you have all these kind cards of. like Talents, mm -hmm. Droplets, and Dark Lure that are made irrelevant by a card like Smoke Grenade. I think the thing is, though, with that card, the decks that are playing it are way more inconsistent than the decks that are not because yeah you add more bricks to your deck but the power ceiling or the ceiling gets higher but i think that's why we kind of see infernobles fell out of the meta a little bit mm -hmm. just because they play so many bricks like the triple ddr the colt wing yeah the death, the death spot, spot one whereas dragon All the Link, eclipse yeah whereas dragon Link doesn't have to play as many like bricks mm -hmm. and it's just way more consistent than noble knights in that like aspect you don't have to play as many bricks to do your combo, which yeah, you can get one hand rips with Levioneer, and they, they but play Smoke Grenade too. If with you do cube. play Smoke Grenade in Cube, you could, but some lists, a lot of lists don't even play that, so like mm -hmm. they don't like require it. So that's why I think that deck is just like leagues better and is doing way better than mm -hmm. Infernoble right now. But like that's one thing because I I notice on stream sometimes I'm when I'm trying to build a list it might be a going second deck like Speed Roid or Mech Knight. I know a lot of people are quick to say like oh, you know you it's this it's this this battle of like ideologies between a like what cards should you play cards that break already established boards or cards that break 
boards while they're being made so that like, prevent them yeah, like hand batteries. traps versus like cards like evenly matched lightning storm droplet. dark lunar more droplet triple tactics talent if you want to include that too mm-hmm. because it's like do you let the board get made and then try to break it with those or do you play engines like you know the side frame engine which comes with its own everybody loves drawing driver He's right. a psychic soldier that rides into bed on the Psy, or autonomic thing called the Psy frame. Called Psy like frame, yeah. yeah. Somebody's going to post it in the comments. Just, <laughs> just everybody the everybody copy-paste the flavor text of Psy frame driver in the comments. That way we know we got some true uh, Psy frame fran- fans <laughs> in, the, in the comments. But, yeah, it's that. Because, like, it, it's some, sometimes it's conflicting, too. Like, it, it, like one of the things, because, like, I really like Triple Tactics Talent. And, like, this is debated in the community, probably, like, what's, like, Talents versus Droplet, or you could even include Dark Lord. They're just Mm. three spell cards that do one thing, and they help to break boards. But they all do it in very different ways. But Talents is different because not only can you use it to break boards, but the thing that's most enticing to me, and I feel like this is just fundamentally one problem I have as a deck builder, is it's, like, that idea of, like, well, I could draw two cards off of it. If they mm-hmm. hand trap me at some point, or if they negate something, right? Yeah. If I bait, I could draw two cards. That could allow me to see way more of my engine, or see more cards that'll help me just, you know, win that turn. Yeah. But then it's like, if you if you're playing that with a card like Darkler no more, then it's like, oh well, there could be a confliction. Well, if I see Darkler and yeah. I don't think many lists of people are playing Talents and Dark. Others, yeah. I, I don't ever see those two cards together. I think you would just play Talents at that point. Yeah, because like it's like you you Darkler their board and the Talents yeah. is dead unless they have a hand trap already at that point. But yeah. like that, so that deck building is just not like good. I think you yeah. would just have to play Dark Ruler or Talents and never both. In the same would you ever list. like or what about even Dark Ruler and Droplets? Because one of the interactions I had, I was playing against Virtual World. Mm-hmm. I Dark Ruler. He has the uh, level nine macro mm-hmm. synchro, and he has uh, calamities. Mm-hmm. He didn't uh, true. He didn't calamities in the standby phase, which I was expecting him to do. But I mean, I guess holding it in some smart. cases is smart. Yeah. Um, because kaiju's aren't like super sided right mm-hmm. now, anyways. So like, he I I dark ruler. He uses the trap, the one that like shuffles to yeah, banish chi. yeah to pop card. He chains that to dark ruler because you can. Yeah. A lot of people. For those that like are unaware, it's like you can chain stuff to Dark Ruler so long as it's not a monster. Not a monster yeah. And then if you have monsters like Calamities, you can chain the Calamities to the trap and dodge, you know, the, the claws uh, of Dark Ruler. Yeah, and you know the effect will still re- resolve because it's a it's a lingering effect. Mm-hmm. Um, so even if it does get negated, you know the effect's still activated and everything like that, and it's still under that, um, you know, you're under that floodgate essentially. Yeah. But you were saying you had droplets yeah. in Dark Ruler? Yeah, so I had, I had Dark Ruler, and then he changed the trap, changed that to that, and then I had to chain Droplet, and I ended up discarding another Droplet for it <laughs> wow. to so hit the, the Calamities. It just sounds like a lot of going second cards and not enough engine cards. Yeah, it's like... I, I, That's why I think you should only play one of those cards. Mm-hmm. Or you could probably play Talents and Droplets in the same like list because drop i would never play either of those with dark ruler i just don't think it's yeah. necessary you know do you think do you think dark ruler is kind of being like what do you think would be phased out in this format or is you think like maybe it's more of like a side deck card at this point but it's like then what what deck are you side decking dark ruler against that like i feel like droplets a lot of lists, isn't already good against yeah i feel like a lot of us aren't even playing dark ruler at all they're just playing droplets or mm. talents because those are just Far more versatile cards, because mm-hmm. you could still go for game under like droplets, for example, and talents just like it just so it just does like everything you like want to do after your your like first like initial push gets stopped. Mm-hmm. That like dark ruler like yeah just like you can break their board. It's a blanket to stop. Of yeah, everything. you can you can break their board, but it's not gonna stop them from like either coming back next turn or something like that mm-hmm. if you don't make like a a good enough like stop or like push to like prevent them from doing anything at all Mm -hmm. that's why i really don't like dark ruler because it doesn't let you go for game and like talents and droplets both do yeah so i just think they're like superior cards right now for this format because there's no deck that like just really puts up just a huge amount of ridiculous negates Mm -hmm. like they could hand rip you and put up like two to three negates but like a lot of decks now if you're playing like a good deck could play through it especially if you have droplets and talents too Mm -hmm. so i think that's why just those are just better cards Mm -hmm. than dark ruler right now yeah. personally but yeah. i i can agree with that especially if you're gonna play any of those cards together i think droplets and talents makes the most sense mm-hmm. 
So like specifically for me for uh, speed droid, I, I think I'm on three talents, three droplet, and two lightning storm. Yeah. And I think for Mech Knight, Mech Knight's weird because Mech Knight's one of those decks where it's like I've I've played previously with lots of hand traps, mm-hmm. but I've also tried it with playing you know those board breaking cards like Dark Ruler and droplets or droplets and talents, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm always it's like I'm always again very indecisive when it comes to like deck building and stuff and i i, I don't know where it comes from <laughs> and then, like that the bias of like card choices as well like i said is another thing i still struggle with this today and i i don't know how to get, i think i think it mainly comes from like you know i'm not like made of money so i don't always have the cash to like have the best new card that comes out every set yeah so like you gotta work with what you got yeah like i remember for like when when Drabble came up, but like, thankfully you're letting me borrow the card, so shout outs to you for that. But um, I I was like, I'll just play Forbidden Chalice or play something like Forbidden Lance. Or I remember for the time when I didn't have like uh, I didn't have talents, I was trying Lance, and like Lance is one of those cards that seems so enticing too because it's like, you know, I could stop an imperm on a really vulnerable play that's vulnerable really only to imperm, et cetera, et cetera. Or you know, it's just it's gonna be that inherent help in like a back row matchup where mm-hmm. the deck like is gonna struggle against the back row deck. Um But then you could just come to the situation where they just happen to not see their imperm or like their back row cards yeah. and they just see monsters. It, and it, then it's Exactly. Then it's literally at worst like a minus seven hundred to like another monster. Minus eight hundred, but yeah. It's yeah. it's I don't know what it is, like I just because I had that for speed roids, I thought I thought uh, it would might be a good card, but then I, I got talents, and talents are just, just way far better. superior. Yeah. yeah, but like again, not everybody has access to those cards, so like you kind of gotta make do with what you got. But that's that. That's that's where I'm at right now with like uh, deck building and mech knight conundrum. <laughs> yeah, it's like do I do I run the hand traps or do i do i run the board breaking cards cuz like i've seen so many lists where people are running like gamma with lambda people are running you know imperm nibiru phantasme like shannon long i, I know he was running imperm or uh, imperm phantasme nibiru and like lightning storms like pot of extravagance and stuff but like mech knights has just been such a pain this month and it's just not the format for it i i just don't think it is for it to perform well because all the control decks are just like really good at controlling and they're the only really good one i feel like magnites does like super well against is like maybe like altergeist or like maybe numeron just because they could just summon their guys Mm -hmm. affected by zexal stuff like that but those decks are fewer than they once were i feel like because people are just playing other strategies especially with the newer sets that have come out Mm -hmm. like rise and phantom rage yeah, I, like Zoo and Dogmatica and just like Invoke Dogmatica just destroy Mech Knights. So the yeah. whole Dogmatica engine is just really strong against the it's whole. It's so deck. tough because like a card like Punishment is so good against a card like Blue Sky and Purple cards yeah. that need to stay on the column in that zone to be able to resolve and activate their mm-hmm. effects. And then again, like you're also having good trap cards to use during the turn, which is taking things away from the Mech Knight player to work with. Yeah, like Natish just popping the cards they set for the Mech Knight. Just oh my sucks. god, it's it's horrendous. Unless you want to play Waking the Dragon, <laughs> but which no. is a card I want to. I, I think I will side going forward. Like Shannon Long, I think has always sided that card, and it does make sense because like that's, everybody wants to hit the back row. That's they, like they perfect set. bait. <laughs> set a card, and they're like, oh, I'm gonna pop it. And he's not gonna have anything to do after this, and then you get a free Aver Max. So I think he was playing Re- Warrior Returning Alive. Oh my goodness! In his list, that card is nuts. Um, but yeah, like. I I mean I guess we'll now talk about like better decks of the format. Yeah. Um, so obviously any dogmatic strategy I feel like is up there. Yeah. There's those are just so good like Zoo invoked. Mm-hmm. Even Eldritch I really like the Eldritch strategy because I was playing that before the Zeus came out and that all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was liking it, but the past two locals I took it to would just feel like it underperformed. I don't know if it was just my build was a little off or like something just wasn't working. I don't know, but I just kind of underperformed the past two levels I went to and just kind of got upset with the list, so I just kind of dropped it and just mm-hmm. went back to Zoo. Especially now, that's probably just the better version because it just, I don't want to say destroys the Outlook matchup, but, like, it sends everything. 
It's it's so such an like, absurd it'll card. Just, it'll just set them back so far that I don't think they'll be able to like recover. It'll just make them use all their traps like in the grave like that turn. Mm-hmm. Their grind game becomes way worse than yours, especially because the deck plays Avarice. So you could just put all your Zeus stuff and your Zeus back and just do it again next turn. Mm-hmm. But yeah, those are definitely really the, probably the best control decks. And then for combo, obviously Dragon Link's probably the best one. Yeah, like, I feel like Infernoble's still good, but not as many people are gonna play it just because yeah. of the brick factor that it has. Mm-hmm. Um, Prank Kids though, I think is another. Prank really... Kids is up and coming. I think I definitely. feel like it's no longer a rogue strategy, and I think that deck is like very, very strong. Tier two, maybe even tier one. Yeah, just because of how many like hand traps you could play in it, and just like have all your Prank Kids now are just like one card. Like their starter f- combo pieces. Yeah, like it's it's. I played against it on on Saturday, and like I've. The multiple times I've played against it, I've just been clueless, like, every time. Like, what to stop. There's no, like, really good played hand traps right now that yeah. really hurt. You just except... need to hope they don't have a fusion spell. Yeah. Like, that's, but that's a very, like, unsafe thing to bank on. Yeah. And, like, the only real good hand trap against it is, like, Nibiru. Yeah. Cause Which just... is a card, speaking of Nibiru, Nibiru is a card that I really like, but I'm also, like, too afraid to run. <laughs> Why I, is that? Because I, because of the factor... I feel like most decks can have a negate ready for it. Most decks can, yeah. And then but, it just makes it irrelevant. Like, Invoked is a perfect example. Like, yeah. Mechab is always there, and you're never but, Nibiruing that deck. Say you play Imperm with it, and the chance that you draw... Or, like, say you play Gamma with it. Mm-hmm. Say you draw both of those, then you're in a really good position against that deck, because you're going to Nibiru in their, about to end their turn or whatever, and they have the Mechab, they'll go, oh, Mechab uh, negate. Yeah. And you're just like, Imperm. Yeah. And then they're just like, wow, there goes my board. It's mm-hmm. so, like, that's really strong, but yes, it's two hand traps, and like, Nibiru alone kind of sucks, but like, I feel like now it's just better because a lot of people aren't trying Expecting it. to trying like, to get to that fifth summon. Like, yeah, that trying to get to the negate before, the, before the fifth summon, or like, uh-huh. making. Because a lot of decks could just play through it now, so mm-hmm. like, they usually just don't care, but like, another hand trap plus Nibiru just like, is just destructive. Like, that's I, why I think Nibiru is the third best hand trap this format. Uh, by Gamma being the best, and then Imperm, and then or it's probably a toss up between Imperm and Nibiru for like the second place spot. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, so Nibiru is a card that like because I'm like with the Mac Knight deck, I've been reworking like hand trap lineups because I think hand traps is gonna be the way I, I go. Um, but like Nibiru specifically, like I said, like it's a card that I think is really good, but also like the the chance of it like always being readily to be negated is like a problem too. But I think it. I think it also just might be might be just worth running regardless at the end of the day. I think especially if you're playing a hard going second strategy like mm-hmm. Magnites, you just have to play it. Yeah. And like, don't be scared if they like. Oh, they're gonna make a negate. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna have any other hand traps. Like, yeah, if you don't have any other hand traps, it sucks. But like, if you have two hand traps and they're just losing, yeah. in most cases. So. And then the Biru on their side of the field gives you a card to work with too. Yeah. Because like, cool. I'm always like concerned about there being a confliction with Gearsu. But Nibiru does the same job. Though. Yeah, it's giving you a card in your field and a card in their field, and then you still get the send. Yep. And, you know, it is what it is. And, like, even, like, even if they can play through the Nibiru, like, you still nibiru them. Yeah, like, their so board, they're... in most cases, probably isn't going to be what it's it was going to be strong. without the Nibiru. So I think you should definitely play that going forward in Max, if, since you weren't already. Yeah, I think, I think what it'll probably be is, like, I think it's Imperm. I think it's definitely triple Imperm. I think it's... Double or triple Nibiru? I'm playing uh, just two right now. Because I know you, you've been playing Nibiru a the lot. The only reason I'm playing two is because in our locals, there's a lot of rogue and like, or not like, well, yeah, there's a lot of rogue, but there's also a lot of control strategies. Mm-hmm. There's not as many like combo players. So that's why I'm only playing two because like I'm still respecting the combo players that are here, but like I just know there's more control players. So I'm just mm-hmm. not maxing out on it. Your hand trap lineup is two Nib, three Imperm, three Ash. And three gamma right now in dog zoo. So that's three, six, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, it's right? eleven hand traps. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do three gamma, two Nibiru, three imperm, and I might do two ash. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I know. Um, I was thinking about crow a little bit too, but yeah, crow. It's cool, but I don't think it's super great against anything. Like, it's a very low impact hand trap, mm-hmm. and like. Yeah, if it's not if it's not negating something or attributing something, like is it is it worthwhile? You know what I mean. That's why I like I feel like Ghost Ogre could be super good, but then again, I I, think it's good sided right now against certain decks. But other than that, not really. Uh Um, 
the only thing I'm really scared about, like with my list specifically, is like I I'm playing Imperm, but I'm not playing Valor. So like if I go against a Dragoon, uh huh, that's kind of scary because that card is just dumb still. Yeah. But like yeah, Zeus could out it, but pretty easily. But still, it my uh, Zeus is still dying to it, which sucks. Yeah. So then I'm gonna be left with like nothing. That's to insane play. though. They make Dragoon. You know any Zoo. Mm-hmm. Slap a bunch of stuff on it, Borbo, just attack directly. Mm-hmm. They're not doing anything about it, unless, of course, they have a, a removal. But, yeah. like, considering it's just a Dragoon, right? And just that, that vacuum situation or whatever, that yeah. simplified situation. Attack directly. You summon your Zeus. You're like, effect. They're like, negate. And you're like, effect. And there goes all their stuff. It's just gone. That is, yeah. Yes, you lose the Zeus. But, but their but, stuff is gone, too. And all you did was normal summon and use your battle phase. Yes, that's like a lot of stuff, but like you just you just like dunked on a dragoon. Like yeah. and like everything else they had too is just going to the grave. It's like a pseudo evenly matched. <sighs> that's why I think like compulse like low key might be kind of nice this format just because uh-huh. if you if you just bounce the zoo normal summon if they don't have barrage, yep. they're just like, "Wow, I lose." <laughs> yeah, that that's that's another pr- partial reason why I'm kind of drawn to Mech Knight because like it's blind second turbo, but then your side deck has to address going first, and you get to play a lot of like real traps, mm-hmm. which is something I, I kind of miss in Yu Gi Oh! because I feel like real traps in the main deck. You should just play like a control deck. And the majority of decks has <laughs> like just gone so downhill yeah. over the years. I, like, I could play a control deck. I think you should because you don't really play that many control decks, and it'd be interesting to see. You the only one. control deck I would play right now, I think, would be Satellar Knights. Because that's the only control deck that I have. Yeah, it's not the greatest oh by a long goodness. shot, but... That's the worst control deck to play right now. Play Zeus? I can play Zeus in that you deck. You could play Zeus. Then you have to get Zeus. I need to get that Zeus. I just think you should get Dogmatic. I know it's expensive, but... What, we say like $300 for the engine? About. That's just absurd. It is a lot, but I mean, it's a very good engine. Probably not getting touched anytime soon, mm-hmm. so... I'd recommend it. It's a good control deck. You can literally play with any other control strategy, and it just, like, amplifies it. That's uh. You could play like random stuff with it too. Just like, I do want to play Necroz with uh that stuff too. Yeah, I think that's. I hate to say it, but like the weakest version. You think so? Yeah, unless you're playing like the su- stupid combo with it. Mm-hmm. Um, the I only the thing I version. like about it, on, is, is just like the ability to like servant send herald. You can't do that. Why can't you? It needs to be attack that is. Uh, you can't serve and send Herald at you, all? You need to send a monster that has attack greater than or equal to the monster trying to search. What's Herald's attack? 600. And there's no Dogmatic because the l- lowest one is 1,000, and that's Aiden. So you have to use Maximus then? Yes, Maximus is how you would do it. Okay. Maximus during your first turn. So you're still, you'd still be like, uh, you'd still like Nadir for like a Pegasus or an Omega. Yeah, or a Titanic Clad. Or a Titanic Clad. Yeah. Get Ecclesia, search Maximus, Maximus, summon. Yeah, well, in that case, you wouldn't search or send Titanic Clad. You just send something that you just dump. Yeah, like a Pegasus or something. I or think Omega. low key Gale Dogra would be pretty good for that deck. Just mm-hmm. to send one to the grave, send one hair to the grave, and then your whole Dogmatic Engine is live. Cause you just make that into El Mirage and then Secure Gardena. Yeah. So that'd be a pretty good thing to do. Just play Del- Gale Dogra with it. Because I really, I'm especially the new Necroz card. Yeah. Uh, Necroz of Ascalon. Yeah, Necroz Ascalon. That card's really nice. I think it. I think it gives uh, uh, like an answer to a problem Necroz has had for a while, and, and uh, like from just Necroz being just Unicorn Pass. Yeah. Or like, like yes, it can do much more than that, but like it's a super frail hand, like combo that dies to a hand trap. Yeah. Like. No, actually, I'm, I'm always a fan game. of Vanity's Ruler. Just plain and simple Unicorn Vanity's Ruler. <laughs> pretty good with with like backed up with traps i think ideally would be or something yeah it would be be like a really good board hard board for them to break that would be pretty nice it just weird because the incantations lock you out of the extra deck and Mm -hmm. like the dogmatica cards want you to have an extra deck yeah so like your normal summon would either go to ecclesia or that yeah so i did see an engine of in a Necroz build that was playing a very small incantation engine it was like it was like a perfectly closed circle engine where you play like one Talismandra, one Candle, and then one of the... Shadow Slime and the one Ritual Spell. Yeah, probably. the one Ritual Spell. Because like you resolve all of them in one turn, yeah. and then they get you a nice that feel to work good. with. And I always wanted to play uh, Extravagance in there, too. That'd be not bad, yeah. I, I've always wanted to play Extravagance in a deck. You gotta I, play Control Deck. Yeah, I can, only, only Control Decks play Extravagance. I can play Mech Knight. 
You could play it in Magna. You could play it in a lot of other things too. But yeah, that's a. Uh... That's a, uh, maybe I do want to play a control deck. I don't I know. I think you should try maybe it. Maybe Teller Knight would be the one that I... I could actually play Extravagance and Teller Knight. You could just play three of each Teller guy. Wow, that's then... way better than... I just realized that that's way better than Desires. I've been playing Desires oh, and Teller Knights for a long time, but that's... Just play Extrav, because you... Yeah, do it. I try may, it. Maybe I'll start... That it. might be the next one deck one month. When yeah, it comes exactly. Back, I'll, get, so I'll get Zeus. Start testing it. Yeah, get Zeus. Probably, you might probably need at least two Zeus. Two Zeus. Because of Extravagance. How, Zeus is like, what, like 50? It's about 50, yeah. That's like, not Maybe a little bit less now, but... I could get six Zeuses for the price of one Dogmatica core, yeah. and then the card will. That card's probably going to go up because it's insane. Oh, it's going to go anytime it's in, soon. It's going to go up. I oh, think. go up. Yeah, yeah it's not off. Not off. Not on the list. Yeah. It should. That card should one hundred percent be on the list at some point. He just hates this card, guys. It's so. He it's so. Zeus. I. I. We played so many matches earlier today. Right here. Right in this very spot. Right where Lugia's sitting. Yeah, right where our boys sitting, the big white chicken. And like, I, I, I don't know if those future ma- those matches will get uploaded because it's literally just me. It's pretty one side. It's literally just me bullying him. Punching his... bag, just into a Mac, like a really solid Mac Knight list. I think. Like, I think if you showed it to the majority of the Mac Knight community, like, yeah, it's a pretty decent list, it's a passable list. Passable. Just getting bodied by Zeus. And that's like that's about it. It's like Zeus and then maybe a trap card. Yeah. Zeus Granted, you punishment. have hand traps too. Like you have Ash and the occasional Gamma, like Nibiru and yeah. stuff. But man, Zeus is just so hard. To, like dealing with hand traps is one thing, but then you add Zeus on top of that. Yeah. Once Zeus is made, the game is usually over. Like in I most see all cases. these Mech Knight profiles now, and I'm like, these are all irrelevant. Yeah. Like how, like if you're not playing Droplet, I feel like you're just losing to Zeus. Yeah, you're just gonna get destroyed. By Talents that is another good out to Zeus as well. I think. They use Zeus, you talents, you steal it. Yes and no, but like, they're probably not gonna have any materials at that point. So uh-huh. like, you're still just gonna have a Zeus on your field. I guess. So like, you're still losing your entire. Yeah, you're field. still losing your whole field. It's sucks. so good. The card Droplet is the only card right now. I think that actively will deal with that card every time. Droplet's pretty good. Yeah. And you ha- you. Have to discard a monster. You, gotta, yeah, you have to discard again. a monster. Yep. If you don't discard a monster, it doesn't matter. They're just gonna chain again. It's like I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> it's so absurd, man. I would talk about. I could talk about this card for an entire podcast. We have a Zeus only podcast. It's it's a good card. I will say that I don't think it's ban worthy, but there's play around to it. I don't think it's the end. There's got to be some card in the game that stops Ixie's monsters. Honestly, and affects that like mass send. I think. The best out to it is to like. I hate to say it, but like let your board get wiped, and hopefully you still have a hand after that, and just kaiju it. I think kaiju might come back into the format. They're good against dragoon. They're good against some other things. They're kind of slept down right now, I think. Mm-hmm. But kaiju it's really good. Just don't make like a huge board if you know you're playing against Zeus. Mm-hmm. Like especially if you're like a control type player, like. Yeah, you might need to put all your eggs in one basket with the combo decks, but I don't know. That's just my take on it. It's probably it might not be the best one, but it's a good way to stop it. I think just they're just like, well, uh, there goes my whole play. <laughs> just yeah. Zeus is gone because sometimes usually all they do is just Zeus pass because mm-hmm. they they might set like one back row because like sometimes they might have to Zeus first before they get the chance to use the said back row. So. I don't know, just one option I think that's okay for Zeus, or like if they clear your board, you might have Gamma, if they try to like do some other stuff, like just set some cards, that'd be a decent way to stop it. Granted, if they didn't already send all your stuff once with it, mm-hmm. they don't have both sends on it still, so. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll talk about other cards in Phantom Rage. Yeah, yeah. Like, which, the only, the only the cards that, ones to you? I think the, the Phantom Knight stuff really is about it. Yeah. And the rank up. I f- I'm surprised I haven't seen that deck do more. I mean, I it's still tell early you, on. Yeah, I couldn't tell you what a single Phantom Knight card does out of there, honestly. I know Torrent Scale is really good, but... I know that, that it can easily me. Bardish, obviously, this Phantom Knight deck. And it can easily go into the Arc Requiem, or Arc Rebellion Dragon. Yeah. Or like Dark Requiem too. Yeah, and okay. it easily can make, uh, you know, Evil Swarm Nightmare, which is a good card. Especially yeah. if you're going, like, it's a really good card. Um... Granted, it does lose to droplets and talents, and... Mm-hmm. but the fact it's one of those decks that it's... it doesn't have all its eggs in one basket. Yeah. Whereas it like isn't a whole like it's a sort of like dragon a link board it's control like... combo deck, sort of yeah. like salad. I feel like yeah, or like dogmatica variant decks. Yeah, kind of. 
not bad. I think the the thing that stands to me or my personal favorite cards out of the set are not good ones, but the dual avatar cards. I feel like those have potential because mm -hmm. invitation is a crazy card. It locks you into fusion summoning, yeah, but you could play with Alistair. You could play with a whole bunch of other stuff. The tokens are normal monsters, so a tech you could do is like polymerization into first of the dragons. Cards dumb. Mm -hmm. they, if they don't have like a oh my God. spell or trap to out it, they're they're just not out in it. But I think that's a very slept on archetype that people just haven't really played with too much. Mm -hmm. But those cards I want to try and maybe do something with. But other than that, like Tribegrade's cool. Like it makes a lot of other decks really strong. A lot of Beast Warrior strategies and stuff yeah. like that. One of someone at our locals was playing Tribrigade. Oh, Ancient Warrior. Ancient yeah, Warrior. Yeah, Dalen. He's very good duelist. Very interesting strategies. He, mm -hmm. he came over right there. I think the main gist behind his list was to make um, either end on the Ancient Warrior Link, which is really good. I think it's like a Compulsor or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or he would go end on the Samorg Link and summon a Barrier Statue. So that's mainly the bulk of what the deck does. Yeah, or even if um, he doesn't open the like the some or can't make the Samorg Link, he, the Tri Brigade Quick Play spell I believe summons it from deck. Its effects are negated for the turn, but once it passed your opponent's turn, I think it's turned on. Is that Don't the Airborne me, Assault? Yeah. yeah, that's the secret, and it's also like an ultra promo, I think. Mm -hmm. I think it just summons any Beast Warrior, Wing Beast, or Beast from your deck. With its effects negated. So it can summon the Barrier Statue. Yep, because it's a Wing Beast. Yeah. So that's a pretty good card, and it's a good lock, because like, not many people are playing wins, obviously, to out it. So mm -hmm. I think that's sort of how the strategy worked. It could go like first or second, too, because I think he played Guan Yun, I believe. It's like the pink Ancient yeah. Warrior guy. Played in Speed Roids, yeah. good card. There's like a Negate Ancient Warrior guy, too, I believe. I don't know exactly what all the cards do, but they're pretty good for going second, I know. But they could also set up a cool board with the Tribe Grade stuff, just Link Climbing. Because mm -hmm. I think the Tribe Grades all have the effect in Grave to banish however many Beast Warrior, Wing Beast Beasts, and then you Link Summon... A monster with a link rating equal to the amount banished. So let's say you banish three, you summon a link three, beast, wing beast, beast mm -hmm. warrior. That's how you get the smorg link out. Hmm. So it's really cool and like how that kind of works. You can just link someone from grave, but yeah, yeah, I played a uh I played a, a version of Tri Brigade on stream last night. Uh link to my Twitch below, by the way. Go follow. Uh streaming every Sunday and Monday. But um it was a Luna Lyrisk Oh, Lyralus? Lyralus. The little level one birds? Version of that with a jack in the hand and stuff. Jack in the hand. I can't remember if I lost to him or if he beat lost? me. I think it might have been. Wow. It's kind of weird. I can't <laughs> remember exactly what his end board was. I mean, you got the VOD still, I'm sure. So the VOD, yeah. Somebody, go look it up later. Somebody, yeah, somebody, either me or somebody in the comments can go check if I, if I ended up beating that deck or not. I know I, I had a really fantastic mirror match against... Uh, Mac Knights right at the end against <laughs> Larry, who's probably watching this. Shout out to Larry. Yep, shout out to Larry for teaching me the uh, the Larry Link shuffle. <laughs> the Larry for Link those shuffle. that don't know, you normal get your suit, summon the token, you make Link Karibo with it, then you make Morningstar, get your search, then you make the uh, Link, Link Cross. Cross, and then you bring back the Link Karibo, getting rid of one of the tokens, and you make Lib with that. So it's a little nice combo. little package, yeah. Um, I, I, I didn't know that beforehand, probably because I don't, you really didn't play with Link Cross either. That and like, whenever I'm working in a deck, unless I'm super stumped, I don't look at other people's profiles. Yeah. I try to just go through the process of like deck building, stumbling through things that work and don't work. Even though people watching me like, doesn't just, he know that this card is really good or he shouldn't play this card? He needs to be playing this card or yeah. this engine or that. Like, why didn't you just net deck it or just take the best list of it on yeah. YouTube? Like, it just kind of takes the fun out of it. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I like to look at lists for inspiration, but like, I also yeah. kind of like to try some tech things, maybe put on some of my own ratios, you know, yeah, like exactly. something like that. Because, like, that's how you set yourself apart as a player, I believe, at some point. And it helps you become a better deck builder if you're not yeah. always looking at people's lists and stuff to take ideas from mm -hmm. i mean the, the only deck in recent memory that i think i did something remotely close to that was with uh ryan fletcher's block ba deck which i i still give that guy a ton of praise ton of credit for i think being the person that made the deck what it was like innovated it mostly yeah. um because i was playing block dragon i was playing block earth burning abyss i think it was calling it. just earth burning <laughs> abyss variant that played block dragon just gigantes as a way to make like I think my end board consistently was just Avermax Beatrice. Yeah, that was what you were doing. Yeah, and then that was it. Not very Until good I saw his combo video. And he mm -hmm. ended on Avermax, Fossil Dyna, Nat Beast, and 
something else. I have ding I, gear suit or something or something else maybe. Yeah, ding or and then like I, I can't remember. If it was just Avermax, Fossil Dyna, and Nat Beast and Nat Beast. Maybe it was. It might have been one other thing, but yeah. And, oh, and Block Dragon on the board Block, too. Yeah, of course. Rest in peace, Block Dragon. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Block Dragon. Yeah, and no, um, get that card out of here. I don't like that card at all. <sighs> Rocks was unfair. Yeah, unfortunate. It's unfortunate a deck like that came along that really ruined Block Dragon for you. Because <laughs> Block Dragon BA showed how powerful it was, but like, it still had the issues of being inconsistent and being hand trap, weak, weak to hand traps at a certain point. Yeah. But, but then Adam Adam Emancipator Man- really took it to the next level. Yeah, it just no hand traps because you got the Guardian up. Because Union Carrier. Yeah, and then Union Carrier too just equips Block Dragon. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, so that was not fun. Hopefully just... there'll be a time where it can come back and Adam Emancipator card. Maybe Union Carrier should hopefully be banned and maybe Block Dragon can come back to one. <sighs> Union Carrier and Halka Fibrax should not exist in the same format. I mean, they shouldn't. You're... Correct. They should just not. They're very degenerate combo facilitators, but I feel like there's just enough like counterplay to them right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I, yeah, I know not everybody loves hand traps, but I don't see a problem with hand traps. I think they're fine. I you don't just... have a problem with hand traps. It's just I don't like what you don't you don't like being forced to play them. Yeah, it's like pl- dedicate nine to th- you know twelve slots in my main deck to these cards, or else I'm gonna have a bad time playing against combo. Yeah, because combo is so resilient. Mm. Most of the time in Yu-Gi-Oh! history, you look at combos as having like a fragile point. Or if it's like hit here, like hitting it here is the best point. Mm-hmm. If you hit it there, they have to divert to a different like a different line, and it might end on something decent. Yeah. And, you know, if you don't, then the whole combo just goes on. You need to draw mm-hmm. a certain card to like be able to play through it or whatever, or have the certain side deck. But now it, it comes to a point where one hand trap is almost never enough unless they open, in, in, you know unoptimally yeah and that i think is an issue like it, yeah kind of it's is. not a fundamental issue for Oh. like if they open really good they open really good right yeah. sometimes one hand trap in any format might not be enough depending on what the deck is but mm. i but i feel like you get to the point when you you, you got to consistently shove all of those cards in your main deck and you lose out on having to play like utility cards like if you don't believe me cody angeloff said it him or not, i don't know if it was cody angeloff it was um another person it was really good. Jesse Cotton. Jesse Cotton. He said it. He said it best, and it was on Milano the Duelist channel. <laughs> the guy who makes skits. Shout out to him because I've been making some skits this year. I only made two, but I, I mean, I'll probably make more at some point. And you guys seem to like them, even though I think they're uh, kind of cringe. A little bit cringe, but little, uh, kind of uh, funny though. That the, the, the I still can't believe that call by the grave skit. <laughs> That still is surreal to me. <laughs> Eleven thousand views in like a day or two is like I think one of the best performing videos I've ever made. That's nuts. I don't think any. I, I think it might be my most liked video of all time. That's too. crazy. Oh it's, my goodness. It's insane. But he, Cody Andalov, Jesse, Jesse Cotton, Cotton. My bad. Both fantastic players. Shout out to both of them, especially uh, Cody because he's hosted my stream a few times. Check out his stream. I don't know if I don't know if Jesse streams on Twitch or not. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I know Cody Angelov does, so check him out on Twitch. Um, his stream is quite regular. He's obviously a good player, so you learn a lot from him. But uh, he Jesse Cotton said in this little short video, he's like, "What do you think about the format?" And he's like, "It sucks." He's like, "Cause you have to play so many hand traps, and it ruins deck building, the fundamentals of deck building, because you know, I mean, I'm not saying Hoban's deck building rules." And things are like the end all be all. Mm. I think in a majority of the time, those rules should be followed to have an optimal list. Yeah. But hand traps are like such a weird thing that only have to be played in such high numbers because of like the way car- power creep is such and way formats are, are right yeah. now and the car the current card pool that exists. And I think what really did it is we got dual overload and eternity code like released within weeks oh, of each God, other. Yeah, that was nuts. That was. We got Needle Fiber. Needle Fiber, Carrier, Carrier Auroradon, An- Anaconda. Anaconda, and then we got, on the following set, Link, Link Cross. Cross, and then, you know, the Tins, we got Dragoon. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you all those cards in the same format together oh, just create a, a just shitstorm. A giant mess of great, amazing cards. And that, then the, the Simorg Link, too, is even is yeah, even. Simorg is definitely a very good card, too. I, I think, like, and, like, they... I mean, if it's the way it is, it's the way it is. But, like, 
I'm not I'm not super opposed. Like if they keep coming out with all these super die hard board breaking cards like Zeus, Alpha, Dark Ruler, Droplets, like they're just printing these cards like crazy. Yeah, they're just like here's all these. I just want to see the game slow down a little bit. I'm not a I'm not opposed to fast formats. Mm. Com- like I played common, I played walk ba. Games yeah. are over in a turn. Like game, the game's over before I end my turn. Yeah, that's pretty shitty in terms of a sense of a card game. Some people like one deck formats. Some people don't. Some people like fast formats. Some people don't. I get it. It's not. I don't think there's an objective truth, but I think in the, t- I feel like each player should at least get a turn. Yeah. And by a turn, I mean it's not the person draws for turn and they scoop. That's not. That's, <laughs> that's not, not what not I mean. A turn. Yeah. But I think, and we'll. I guess. I was going to talk about virtual world before we move into the ban list, but I think quick thoughts on virtual world. I think, I think it's okay right now. I think it's kind of underrated. It's got some good utility cards and it's getting more support. I think the engine for the deck is very strong. Mm-hmm. You could play just that and hand traps and boom, it's a pretty good deck. Yep. I feel like the power that it has is a little bit underwhelming for some certain decks, but it's definitely, I think... I think it's very comparable to the decks like Salad. Mm-hmm. It does similar things to Salad. Like it just, like every card is basically Gazelle. Like yeah. it's a good way to put it, mm-hmm. I think, because they just all dump and summon themselves. Typhoon's a good side deck card against them. If you it's if okay. you have if you have a if you have a Virtual World Fiend in your area, Typhoon. You need they need two face up spells, I believe. So so if they just have if they just have Chuchi or they just have the spell. Not my whole life is a lie. You're not doing anything with Typhoon. No way. They need to have two phase up spells, I believe. You're wrong. Let's see. Typhoon, get it up on the screen. Card right one phase up spell and trap card in the field, destroy it. If your opponent controls two or more spell trap cards and you control no spell trap, you can activate this card. So say hand. they say they play the spell, right? Uh huh. And then activate Kowloon. They're still gonna have a spell at the end of the day. Cause yeah. Never mind. It's activates, yeah. So I don't think Typhoon's that good against Ghost Ogre? No, because all the guys activate in hand. This, do they do they activate the spell, the spell at any point? N- unless they're, they're going second. Okay. No, the spell doesn't have Never any mind. other effects to, unless we're going second. Yeah, it's ogre's not good against the deck. Veiler's not good against the deck. Imperm's not good against the deck. Ash is like mind drain. Mediocre. <laughs> Such mind hand drain. effects. Yep. Oh my goodness. Mind drain. People sign a necros format. Hey, if virtual goes through the roof. Mind drain mind is drain instant be... GGs. It's pretty good against the deck. Yeah. We'll move to the ban list. Okay. Yeah. The in terms of, so, I think what needs to happen to slow the format down. I feel like there's some guilty, guilty cards. And those cards, I think if you ban them all, I don't think the core fundamentals of the game would change too much, and I think the game would be better off for it. Let's hear it. Yeah, Link Cross is going to zero. Okay. Yeah, Let Union Carrier, okay. Helga Firebrax. Okay. Yeah. All three of those cards. Those. Because cards. I think Aurorodon can stay. If Hulk is gone. That's true. Because what is the... It's a machine link to that can summon another machine from the deck. And then if... if the thing is, though, if Hulk of Fibrax is gone, how many tuners are allowed back in the game now? Right? I Just think, think about that. I think Glow Bulb could come back. Yeah. Because why was Glow Bulb banned in the first place? Because of Hulk of Fibrax. One card Hulk. Yeah. Why is Jet Synchron banned? One card Hulk. Why is Orion banned? <laughs> That's an interesting one. You I think, think it was just because Olaan it was the most stay? broken extender that you could summon off of Aurora Dunn because Halk was still legal. Yeah, but I think with Halk being gone, I think a line could probably come back. Oh yeah, just Aurora Dunn's not as like awful for the sake of, the of speed roids, Please, <laughs> please let a line come but, back. Yeah, in an ideal world, all three of those cards banned, gone, get them out of here. Bring back all the tuners. Bring back other fun stuff yeah Destrudo could probably mm, that card's way Dragon too good, Link right? is iffy with that one. So that I think what you I think. My biggest contenders that you just listed off there, I think Union Carrier is okay. I think that card... Buster Lock? That's fine. Infinite Negate? That's fine. You summon an Alpha, poke it. Or Infinite Negate, just so fragile, so bad. Not good. Not good at all. <sighs> Trust me. It's summon, it, summon a beast. That's what the guy did. That's what the Lyrilist guy did. He did an Infinite, Infinite Negate Tribrate. That's what he did. Okay, Infinite Negate. I lost to that. Infinite Negate Tribrate. That's not very good, though, especially if you just summon one single Zoo King or Droplet them. Must be nice. Not gotta, everybody can play. Do. Not everybody can Zoo King or uh, Al or uh, Zeus. Or hey, you have Darker Ruler. You could do that too against that deck. <sighs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. So, I just just hearing the words Infinite Negate, my mind immediately goes, it shouldn't be legal. It's not that bad. Infinite Loop should not be legal. I, that's true. It looks bad for the people looking in. It's true. We need more people but playing the game. It's not we don't want bad. people on the outside looking in. Be like Infinite Negate. But how does anybody beat it? But then it's just really not that bad. 
That's true. I promise. So that's, that's you're, why I, you're, I don't, you're not wrong. So you're what I was saying is wrong. Union Carrier is fine. Mm-hmm. That card is okay. But LP, I think, needs to go. That card, 100, I agree that with card that is so stupid. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Especially with World Legacy Guard Dragon and just any dragon could turn into it. Pisty's okay. Pisty's fine because it recurs from Grave or Banish, which mm-hmm. is like, so you already have to have the cards in play. That's yep. fine. Another interesting card, I think, Romulus. I don't think that card's going anywhere, but that card is just so dumb. Yeah. Just really, really good, but... I don't think that card's going anywhere. Same with the likes of his old. I don't think those cards are... But if you wanted a mass slowdown in the format... Hit all those links. Ideally, you axe all of them. And axe things all the links. slow down. Yeah, you're right. The soul is a card that should have gone years, yeah, years ago. Yeah, that card but... it just missed dodge lists way too many times. But... Same thing with Divine Sword Phoenix Blade. That card should be banned, too. That card should definitely be banned as well. Or just as old. One of those two yeah. just needs to go. But those cards, I think, are going to dodge the list. But I think mm. LP is a huge mm. contender to get hit. Smoke Grenade. Smoke and... <sighs> Smoke grenade should be banned, one hundred percent. It should be, but smoke I, grenade should be banned. I don't think hundred percent. Though I, just I think, think they will. Miscellaneous Sora should be banned again. That is a card that could definitely go back to one, and I don't think anybody would be mad except the <laughs> couple Dino players. I mean, there's quite a few Dino they players. They can still play seven copies of you it. Can, you can still got. I think Fossil League should go to one, and Misk should go to one, and then I think uh-huh. those are good hits to Dino. That deck slows way, way yeah. down. Fossil Dig, Misk. If yeah. Fossil Dig and Misk both get hit to one, that deck slows down significantly, mm-hmm. and I think that would be a great thing. Absolutely. Because that deck is just still very oppressive, like... Still winning a lot of tournaments, or like doing well in a lot of tournaments, I should say. It, it, the Call by the Grave is at one, but for them, it's at six. Yep. <laughs> so it's stupid. better than Call by the Grave. Way better than Call by. It's absurd. Um, and other things in Dragon Link, I think like. What about Levineer? I think the card's fine. Okay. It's a really good extender, but it takes a lot to get going. Mm-hmm. Um, Chaos Space is an absurd card. I don't think it's gonna get hit, but I think it should definitely a go to future contender. It's a future contender to go to probably one, just because mm-hmm. that card is so good. Yeah, it searches out the baby dragons like they're at three mm-hmm. or four, honestly, at this point. Like it's just so dumb that it puts back the one you already used to some of the other one, and then you get to search the one back for next turn and just loop the whole engine. Mm-hmm. I think Chaos Space could just definitely go to one LP band. And then other than that, I think the deck is kind of okay because like the rocket cards are really good but mm-hmm. i don't think any of them are like ban worthy because yep. like tracer's dumb but like it deserves to be dumb striker dragon surging boot is like really good but i don't think it deserves to get hit like yeah but that deck drag link definitely needs to be addressed in some way shape or form maybe infernoble and like all those combo cards you just stated earlier because yeah. if you ban halka fibrax and if you ban link cross even if you ban Aurorodon. Because at, at if but again if if Hulk is gone you don't play Aurodon, mm. but if you even if, if all three of those cards are gone, Infer Noble Knight still can be played. Yes, and it can still end on a board of like Appaloosa with two negates, Link Karibo, IP Mask around a Dweller. It's pretty good. <laughs> which yeah, it's pretty good. But you have to play the Ignite Engine at that yeah. point. Yeah, or like it's not keys. terrible. Yeah, right. You play yeah the ver- version I played, and there's a deck profile on my channel for anybody that's interested. Is an Infer Noble Knight build that's way future proof because it it doesn't run any of those cards um it's not as consistent um there's there, you still play a sold so like two warrior combos still work thankfully but i i like that build because like it's future proofed and it's still nice to know that even if even if Hulk, even if link cross even if you can't play Rorodon, like the deck still is able to like you still can get access i don't think you get access to Unfortunately, like Charles, I think there might be a combo where you still can. Probably. I haven't played the, the, that version in such a long time, so I couldn't tell you offhand. I feel like Gokis are a good way to like supplement that. Oh, too. yeah, the Goki engine. It's just a three-card Goki engine. I think it's it's Suprex, Octostretch, and Rematch. Sounds pretty good, um, yeah. Because you a sold summons out the Stretch. Octostretch, and then you link that off, and then that you get Suprax, you pendulum on the Suprax, and you link that off, and then you get, get the rematch, rematch, bring it back, make a rank four with your Ignites and stuff. You could either make a rank four, or like, use it as, like, synchro material with Roland, even, for Charles. Yep, yep so exactly, or Oliver. Yeah. So, like, the deck definitely still functions, which is cool to see. And it, it, it goes to show you that, like, combo decks still work without those cards in the format. Yeah, they do, yeah. And it, it's to the point where, like, it's not, like turbo combo like if you nibiru me after link cross like i still have an absurd just because i resolve Hulk, i still get borderload savage herald mm-hmm. or in some cases you can even do like 
with like power tools. I'm I'm pretty sure like if you get in a beard after Link Cross and you have Oliver in hand, you're fine. You can still go like Halky into Deskbot, into Aurorodon, bring it back, make power Colt tool, yeah. Colt Wing, DDR, just like go off still. And yep. That's why that that card is it needs to go. Yeah. It has to go. One hundred percent. And a sold should probably go to She should. They should come out with a more balanced warrior mm-hmm. support monster or just I think the code breaker stuff is that like balanced support yeah. for warriors. I'm, i believe they're warriors. I think they are. They're too. really good and they There's link, only three code breaker yeah, cards. Yeah, they link climb very, very well, but I think those are way more balanced cards than mm-hmm. Because they're really good, too, don't get me wrong, but not many people are playing them, which is, like, kind of strange to me. Yeah. Because, like, people are usually just using them to go into, like, Bardish, I believe. But, yeah, I think those would be a much better option if his old were to ever get banned. Yeah. But I personally would like to see the format slow down. I think a lot of us would, too. I would definitely wouldn't mind it. I don't think it would, again, I don't think it would have changed my enjoyment of the game. Because yeah, no, right now, personally for me, Yu-Gi-Oh!, it's a little boring. I still love yeah. the game. Don't get me wrong, people. I love this game. Otherwise, I wouldn't be making, I wouldn't be talking about it for an hour plus. Mm. Um, yeah, it's just in one of those times. It's where sad you're... to see it that like it's just like there's these like far from jo- like he joked about it in one of his videos. He's like he's like it's t- something talking about hand traps or the way the format is. I think the, this his video might have been called "This Format Sucks." Probably. Go watch that video because he, he hit the nail on the head and is why that format the format sucks. It's like, oh, you know, you play all these hand traps, like, well, just draw them. Oh, I didn't draw them, I lose. That's a pretty terrible thing to bank on to have to do well in this game. Is that, oh, I didn't draw it. Yes, yeah. it's a card game. Yes, that will always play a factor, but I feel like now so more than like recent times. Yeah, because I know Spiral and um, Goki formats were very oppressive like this yeah. format. They're just that like, the combo decks are just crazy. Yeah, That's Striker, Salad, Thunder, that whole like trifecta. I, I, I kind of like that format. That was a really good format. That was you a didn't, good format. You didn't have to play like huge amounts of hand traps yeah. in the deck. You just needed to know the matchups well. Yeah. And you needed to, and like, there were really like Block Dragon. Block BA was so fun to like. <laughs> remember all the times we'd be at UB and we'd be testing, mm. all the, like all against Sal, against Striker Orcus. Like that, that was that was a great good, times. I'm like, I'm like nostalgic for it. <laughs> it was like a year ago at this yeah, point. Yeah, and it, with all the stuff that's happened, you know, all the madness and everything. Uh, yeah, and events being canceled, obviously for the better. But um, like, makes, makes me miss older it. formats. Yeah, and yeah. you want to go back to that. Yeah, yeah but. Uh, what are we gonna do until then, right? Yeah. <laughs> it just kind of the game's gonna be a little stale. I feel like until events actually do come back, probably for a lot of people. I mean, playing online can only get you so far. I feel yeah. like with your enjoyment of the game, but we gotta make do for the time being. Yeah. You know, we'll 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 get through it together. We'll be we'll be walking down the aisle <laughs> at the next YCS very soon. <laughs> hopefully, that's, that's that's the hope. You hopefully, know? in twenty twenty one, we'll see a YCS. I figured. Hopefully. That's probably when it's gonna be. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. it's it's all be hopeful. Yeah. <laughs> like, Cross your keep your keep your fingers crossed or whatever. I don't know, but but uh, it's been a good podcast. It has like, been. Right? Yeah. One other thing I want to mention too, I uh, opened some Dark Rev two packs on the channel that my dad found at his house that had been there for probably fifteen years or so. Go watch that. video. Go watch that video. It was sick. I got I sent out some cards to get graded. Let's not spoil anything now. But uh. There will be a video on that too. So go check out that video. It's been up on my channel for a couple weeks now. So if you haven't watched it, just go watch. Just it. go watch. If it. I if it's been spoiled at some point, because I, I think I I think I did show in one of the Mac Knight vlogs what I got in, in one of the but like Understandably sh- so. It's it's your fault if you got spoiled. Just go watch it. It is check a great out that video. video. Like you usually don't do pack opening, so yeah. it is cool to see you like do especially an older pack opening. I that think was, that might have been my definitely. favorite pack opening ever yeah. my, well, this might be one of my favorite videos ever on my channel yeah because that's just a really like cool thing to open the story behind it too and everything and just the fact that what was in there was in there and that's nuts and now like be i think because of that i'm super into collecting like old school i stuff think that's sort of like because i know before you were kind of into it but then like once you got those packs and pulled what you did your collection just like you just wanted to collect things. You're just yeah. skyrocketing. I'm, I'm, you... I'm nostalgic for the old school yeah, stuff. Especially now. like with Pokemon you recently bought. 
one of the big money Charizards I yeah. had. So and you yep. you pulled that crazy Charizard too. I opened on a, camera. Yep, on camera. <laughs> yeah, it's in the vlog too. And I also I opened a box of uh, Pokemon Lost Thunder. Um, I uploaded it to the channel. If anybody's watching still at this point, um, it's unlisted. So maybe if anybody wants to watch me open me and my brother open packs for an hour because we we did a slow roll pack opening um i'll post the link to it in the community tab i won't make it public but i'll just for those that care but want to see a cool yeah. old not like older box mm -hmm. of pokemon but like it's expanded format now if anybody yeah. plays so it's I, a little bit older yeah and i think another thing to, another years. dream video for the channel too would, at some point would be to open a vintage uh, box of Yu-Gi-Oh stuff that'd be cool i know like Simo simo has been doing his uh, progression series, and I love that series. That is a great series. I usually don't watch Simo videos. I'm usually not the biggest Simo fan. I'm not saying his videos are terrible or he's a bad guy. I think he does what he does well, obviously by his statistics and everything. Yeah, good. YouTuber. But I've been addicted to that series, and I know you said you have too. Yeah, I love watching that series. Like I usually work on Mondays, and I just get home, turn that right on. Yeah, progression my series. Oh my goodness, it's so, so good. It's so, so good crazy to, to see. Yeah. How decks were just good stuff decks. Yep. And then every set you you'd pick and choose the yeah, best cards. Yeah, sprinkle like in a couple cards if it's a new set, and then yep. that was it. And we're really we cool. we might we might do something like that. I, I know it'd be kind of cool that we we mean mean this fella right here. Probably not on camera, but like yeah. on the side, we might just screw around one night, just yep. do some progression type stuff, play some lob, mm -hmm. and just go forward. And work up. Yeah. That'd be super cool. Maybe do it on stream or something. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be fun for uh for the Twitch audience. Idea, yeah. So, That's but a yeah, very cool idea for a video. Yeah, shout out to Simo. Shout out to Simo. Engage for doing and, that and series. Mr. Nim Nim, yep. yeah. He, uh, he, he hosted me the other day on, on Twitch, so yeah, shout out to you for Big that. Big shout out to both of them, yeah. But yeah, that's, I think, good time to end the podcast. It's almost 1 a.m. and you got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. I got to be up early, but yep. it's fine. It's worth it. Thank you for being here, of course. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you for having me on again. No problem. No problem. My pleasure. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Um, let us know your thoughts on the comment section below on some of the stuff we talked about, specifically why Zeus should be banned. It's unfair, it's oppressive, because <laughs> it is. Card comes out, it's over. It's over. But that's all I'm gonna say. Thank, thanks for watching. Hopefully, there'll be another podcast sooner than the last than the last one. one was between this yeah. one. Whatever. Thanks for watching. See you guys later. And last but not least, a huge shout out, of course, goes to our Divine Level channel members here on YouTube, Academic Thick, Zors, and Cadillax84. As always, thank you guys so much for your generous support towards the channel. It really does help out a lot. And again, thank you guys so much. <music>